Today I'm going to show you how to make an artist canvas stretcher frame. First how to make the stretcher frame, then how to apply the canvas to the stretcher. Lastly, we have to rabbit skin glue it so that the surface of your canvas is primed and ready to receive your oil or acrylic paint. Enjoy! Roofing batten's the cheapest wood you can buy for making a stretcher. Keep it in a bundle, taped together, leave it to acclimatise for two weeks indoors before you start to use it. I've cut the outer stretcher bars with the Studhawk 45 and clamped them down to the table to check for square. The screws I'm going to use on the mitres are self-tapping and we're going to go through the heel of the mitre rather than in the end so the wood doesn't split. Then we're going to put a 2 inch pack glue down the join and a 2 inch panel pin. You can put two in the end slightly offset to each other. Here in the middle we're going to do a half housing taking away half the material and the same in its counterpart. We need cross housing here and in the middle. Gives the whole stretch a rigidity and strength. Also corner braces at 45 degrees. Now we can mark out for the centre housing. I'll put my stretches in dry, no glue for now. And to mark this, make sure the shoulder is at the side of the stretch bar, both sides, and then you can mark out your joint in the middle with your marking knife. This will give you a really accurate centre half housing lap joint. The knife's got a bevel, so make sure you put the flat into the side of the wood, the centre stretcher bar, otherwise it'll be an inaccurate marking due to the bevel on the marking knife. And they'll go together nicely, beautifully when you've cut those out. Now to cut these out, put your knife in the knife mark, it'll give you absolutely pinpoint knife accuracy, slide your Studhawk 90 up to it, make a slight downhill cut. Then, at the front, to start the cut, then we're going to tilt the saw slightly backwards and go down to the depth, the correct depth on both sides. Now we're going to turn the wood 180 degrees to keep our stud hawk 90 on the right side of the wood so the saw is on the waist side of the line. Two more centre cuts and we can start chiselling out. Don't try to split your wood all at once along that line. Don't try to put it in all the thickness. Take a little nick out. Observe how the wood's splitting. Remember grain rises and falls within a piece of wood. So you need to feel each piece of wood individually. Chop back slowly to your marking gauge line, which your chisel will drop into nicely for your final chamfering off or chiselling off. Here again, observing how the wood splits. Now, use the flat of the back of your chisel to see if the bottom of the joint is flat. You'll see any light in the gap between the chisel and the wood. Make adjustments. A rounding chisel action is a really good way of doing this. Trying to go straight across it tends to tear the wood. So this rounding chisel action and you'll end up with a beautifully cut through housing. Now we can check the joints for alignment and we can start gluing up. Use a waterproof wood glue and your first screw in. Sometimes come out again because remember these screws are drill bits. Corner brace at 45 degrees. You'll see the pencil marks to align it exactly. I'm going to put a top clamp on with just a tiny pinch of tension just to hold it to stop the screws pushing the wood away so that it all pulls in perfectly at 90 degrees. Now we'll put a panel pin in here, just like I said on the corners, but into these. Slide the hammer on the table. 
you won't hit your fingers, tap a two inch panel pin home. So this is screwed and two inch panel pinned and glued. And remember, the glue is stronger than the wood. It stops it twisting. So up to about this size, which is about 29 inches square, you won't have to put cross stretches in. You can get away with this. Uh, but any bigger, you need to put the cross stretches in like the big canvas on the table. You'll need a staple gun and canvas stretcher pliers. These grip your canvas. Don't try and do it with any other pliers. You'll tear your canvas. Our joints are all nicely made. A couple of screws in, planed off on the edges. Glued up nicely, overnight. Left it clamped to the table. Left it to glue in one plane so that the stretcher doesn't twist or warp overnight. We've mounted a three quarter inch quarter round beading. On top of it, glued and pinned it. And that keeps this canvas off of the stretcher bars. Around the edge, we've got a pencil mark. That's a very important part of the process. So that as you stretch your canvas over onto your stretcher, you get a parallel line. Otherwise, you'll stretch your canvas unevenly. And that's where you'll get bubbles and warps and cracking in the surface of your canvas. So these are your pliers. Grip the canvas. There's a nib on the back of the pliers, helps you pull it over, but obviously we've got to now turn the canvas and start stapling it to the stretchers. So here we are, in the centre first, centre to centre, go a few inches along, don't try and go all the way along one side, you've got to do it a bit at a time to each corner, and it's Good to take the tension up on the corners with a temporary staple until you've got it evenly stretched to the corners. Your staples one and a quarter inches apart maximum. Um, this gives you enough grip so you'll see plenty of staples in this and that pencil line is all important for keeping the right even stretch across the whole plane of the canvas. Now all that we require is the rabbit skin glue. So, put hot water in the sink, put this in, obviously don't let the water go into the thing, but come back in five, ten minutes, that will have um, liquefied again, because it tends to go solid. So this is the rabbit skin glue, proper rabbit skin glue for your canvas, and mix it ten to one, and leave that there for ten minutes. Ten minutes later, in the warm water, it's nice and running liquid, before it was stiff. Now ready to apply your rabbit skin glue, dust off your canvas so that you don't glue any bits of dust to the surface, hear that ping, nice and tense, and I'm going to give it sort of two coats in one, go over it twice to make sure I've really thoroughly coated it with the rabbit skin glue. If it starts to solidify outside, remember re-liquify it in the sink, but always soak your flakes 24 hours before you use them of your rabbit skin glue as we showed you in the container the powdered flakes and all done with your stud hawk 90 and your stud hawk 45 that's all you need a nice sharp saw nice flat table do your half housings your mitres all with one simple pair of saw guides a beautifully prepared canvas on its stretcher. Now all you have to do is paint yourself a masterpiece. Thanks for watching.